Hello, in this video you are going to learn the basics of lice and what to look for when you're checking yourself or a loved one for an infestation. A louse is a small bug that gets no larger than a grain of rice. They vary in color from clear to red to dark brown depending on when they last fed. They have six legs with tiny claws that have evolved to fit perfectly around a single strand of hair. Lice do not have wings and they cannot jump. They feed on human blood and live for about 30 days. A louse cannot survive away from a human host for more than 48 hours due to starvation. A fun fact about lice is that a louse can hold its breath underwater for up to eight hours. A knit is a brownish color lice egg. They often appear white on the strand of hair and are attached with a cement-like substance, which is actually the louse's saliva. They will not move on their own when touched or even after hatching. Now that you know a little bit about lice, I'm going to teach you how to detect an infestation. The first step in combating head lice is knowing how to conduct a head check. Knowing where to look and what to look for is critical. I'm going to take you through some easy steps in conducting a check at home. The first thing you need to have is the correct tools. Starting with a rat tail comb or a manicure stick to help separate the hair, hair clips which will help to hold the hair up when you're combing, a lice comb, preferably one with metal teeth, paper towels, and a spray bottle should you be conducting a head check on someone's hair who, when it's dry. Okay, before we get going on conducting the actual head check, I wanna talk about a couple spots on the scalp um, where a female louse would be most likely to start laying her eggs. Um, we call them hot zones. Um, and the reason why they're considered hot zones is because they're parts of the scalp or an area of the scalp where it remains dark and moist, which are just typically great conditions for the eggs. Um, so I'm gonna take my comb, I'm just gonna part right down the middle of the back here. Um, the first and probably the most common spot um, is the nape of the neck, all right? So generally back in this area here, um, you can easily find, um, even in an early infestation, um, eggs where the female louse may have started laying. Um, in addition to the nape of the neck, another common spot is actually right above the ear. Um, typically it's a little bit towards the back, um, again, just because the ear helps to keep this area nice and dark and moist. Um, so that's the second spot. And the third spot is the crown of the head. The reason why the louse chooses the crown of the head is that this is actually the warmest part of your scalp. Um, so it is a, not only is it a great place to lay eggs, but generally speaking, the louse will eventually migrate back to the top of the head. Okay, so those are some three, three really good, what we call hot zones. So if you're doing a head check at home, you may wanna start by just taking a peek in those areas. It does not mean that there are not going to be eggs in other parts of the scalp, um, but these may be spots that are easiest to find, okay? You can also look, if you notice that your child is itching in a certain spot that does not include those three areas, you may wanna check the spots where your child, uh, you know, perhaps maybe having some itching, um, itching in those areas, so. Okay, so now we're going to start uh, actually conducting the head check. Um, the best way to start a head check is by sectioning the hair into smaller, more manageable sections. Um, I usually take the tip of the, either the rat tail comb or the front, and you're gonna section the hair right down the middle. The key with conducting a really good head check is actually to try to create really good, clean parts. So having a comb is really critical for that. So I'm going to section the hair right down the middle, I'm going to move to one side, and then I'm going to section it one more time, right down the middle, and again, looking for a nice clean part. Once I get my little sections together, I'm gonna to clip the hair up. And I'm gonna do the same thing back here. Okay. And with my last two clips, I'm going to move to the other side. Again, right down the middle, nice clean part. I'm gonna clip the back area up. Okay, this is the area where I'm actually gonna start my head check, okay? So I'm gonna take my section here, and now I'm going to create multiple vertical sections, excuse me, horizontal sections. 
Okay, so I'm going to take the majority of that section and I'm going to clip it up and then I'm going to leave a little bit of hair dangling down. If the hair is damp, um, you can actually start with your lace comb and actually start combing. In this case, Deb's hair is dry. So what I want to do is take my spray bottle and I'm just going to dampen the hair a little, especially close to the scalp. Once it's damp, I'm going to take my comb, lice comb, metal tooth lice comb preferably, paper towel. I'm going to run through the hair just quickly with my regular comb to make sure there's no knots. And I'm going to take my lice comb. I'm going to hold the hair out, preferably in a more horizontal position versus down. And I'm going to hold the hair close to the scalp, take my comb, and I'm going to start with the comb right on the scalp and I'm going to push it in and off the hair completely. In and out. The comb should actually be touching the scalp throughout the whole beginning part of the, of the swipe and then pulled completely off the hair strand. Once I've done that a couple of times, I'm going to take the comb and my paper towel and I'm going to pinch the comb into the paper towel. Open the comb and look for evidence of nits or a louse. Most people think that the eggs or nits are white, but actually a egg with a baby in it is going to be brownish in color like we spoke about earlier. So when you swipe your comb onto a white paper towel, they will typically become very obvious. Once I swipe through a couple of times, I will go back again and go around the hair fully. So from back to front, front to back, top to bottom. And the key again is to make sure that that comb is hitting the scalp and pulling completely off the hair. Swipe into the paper towel again. And then if there is no evidence of lice in this one section, I will leave it and then I will move up to the next section. Again, a little water all around, close to the scalp. Comb through, make sure there's no more knots. Take my lace comb, right to the scalp, right on the part line, in and out, in and out, in and out. I'm going to put the hair down, take my paper towel, and pinch it between the sheet. I'll go back through one more time, just to be sure that I've covered the whole section thoroughly. The last step I will take in completing a whole section is once I have created my horizontal sections and swiped through, I will grab the whole section one last time and I will take my comb through the whole area. Again, holding it out, more of a horizontal hold here and just coming around the whole section one last time. One last swipe of the comb into my paper towel to look for evidence of lice. Once I'm done with this section, I will clip up the hair again and then I will move to my next section. You will do this exact same process in each of the next three sections. Okay, so you'll move to the back section in small sections again horizontally. Usually I'll do usually three sections within the hair. Um, if you have a child who has really thick hair and you feel as though you're not going to be as thorough getting the comb through the hair, then my suggestion would be to create more horizontal sections. So probably more likely to create four sections versus three. So always keep that in mind depending on how thick your child's hair is. Um, but the process and the exact steps I showed you here is what you're going to follow in section two, section three, and section four. Um, for the purposes of this video, um, Deb is one of my technicians and was kind enough to uh, help us out today. So there was obviously no viable lice found when I swiped the comb into a paper towel. Um, however, earlier this morning, we did have a family come through where there was family members who had active lice. So what I'm going to show you now is what exactly we took out of the hair um, when we swiped with the comb onto the paper towel. 
now that you know how to conduct a lice check at home. If you don't have a lice comb, you can still be effective at conducting a check. Our suggestion would be to focus on the hot zone areas, again, the nape of the neck, above the ear and the crown. Move the hair above, uh, section the hair in those areas, look very closely to the scalp, again, usually about an eighth of an inch or a quarter of an inch off the scalp. If you see something that looks suspicious on a strand of hair, I would ask that you pluck the hair out, place it on a paper towel. If you see something protruding off the side of the hair strand, chances are you're looking at a knit. Also, always remember that if you have a knit, there's got to be a louse, right? It's always the, the chicken and the egg. If you have one, you have to have the other. In this case, if there's a knit, there must be a louse. Um, if you see any evidence of viable lice, it's time to take action. Um, I would ask that you call the clinic, talk to one of my technicians or myself, and we can walk you through a variety of different options for how we would approach your particular situation. Thank you for your time.